reasons why I believe. In today's lesson, we're going to go over reasons why I'm a Christian. And I think it's a, well, A, it's a good listening practice, and B, it's important to me. So I'm just sharing my interest with you. All right? So let's begin. The reasons why I believe. Before macroevolution can ever take place, random chemicals must come together to form the first cell. Now, when people are talking about macroevolution, the term evolution itself means to evolve. And it's the process of evolving. But macroevolution is like going from nothing all the way to a complex organism. Whereas microevolution is basically species changing a little bit over time. Then the first cell would need to survive long enough to find suitable food sources for it. So whenever you hear people talk about how like the first cell happened, they're conveniently leaving out that for every cell, that is created, there also has to be food sources for that cell. Too many species are dependent on each other for macroevolution to work. If fish walked out of the water, food would already have had to evolve on land for it to survive. If nature needs bees to survive, it has always needed them to survive. In other words, when modern science is telling us that if one organism goes, the whole thing goes, that's always been the case. They can't do take backsies and say, well, before they didn't need bees, but now all of a sudden they need bees. It doesn't really work that way. Um, if you look just about in the like, habitats and how everything's connected and the whole cycle of life, it just makes evolution not really make sense. The odds are so bad that serious scientists have suggested we live in a simulation and panspermia to bypass or origin of life questions. Uh, basically, if you've seen the movie Matrix, when they're talking about we live in a simulation, there are people that have theorized that we actually live in a simulation. And panspermia basically is that some kind of alien DNA got here, or aliens made us, basically. Something other than happened on Earth, because that way they don't have to do the research on Earth to figure it out. Because basically, it doesn't make sense that things just happened the way they did, without some kind of divine intervention. Both theories still require an origin of life, but make it off-world to make serious research impossible. We have no junk DNA or unnecessary organs like previous, aha, like previous believed. We have no junk DNA or unnecessary organs like previous believed. Now, do you happen to see anything wrong with this sentence? If you caught that I'm missing something and that I should have had previously instead of previous, then you are right. We have no junk DNA or unnecessary organs like previously believed. And I'm kind of implying scientist in that. Like, like the, and so I'm referring back to the other sentences. I'm basically saying that like scientist previously believed. And amazingly, An amazingly power creator is the simplest explanation. An amazingly powerful creator is the simplest explanation. Natural beauty, natural law, and complexity all point to creation. Global histories and the fossil record it support a global flood. Multiple global catastrophes fit with the biblical account. The Genesis Gap Theory is the first flood and first mass extinction. Sin entering the world is the second mass extinction. Noah's Flood is the third mass extinction. 
soft tissues found in dinosaur remains destroys most so-called scientific mainstream accounts of the origin of life. And basically what I was saying with that is um, if dinosaurs were alive millions upon millions of years ago, there would be no soft tissue. It's like, like basically my skin, that's soft tissue, not like, not converted into minerals over time. And you don't get that over millions of years. They can try to explain away any way they want. Millions of billions of years don't happen and soft tissue still be around. It just it doesn't make sense. It, it's, it's silly. It is. It's actually silly. Creating diamonds and petrification does not take as long as it one, as once believed. Hmm. So now I have a problem. Petrification is not is showing up as I spelled it wrong, or under Office Libre it doesn't have that. So what I'm going to do is can anybody see? No. But anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to Google it, to make sure I spelled it right because I don't want to be wrong. And there it is. Yes, I did it right. So now I'm just going to add it to my dictionary. Creating diamonds and petrification does not take as long as once believed. Now the thing is, is they used to think that um, petrification took like a long, long time. But there are places where people have fence posts that are in the ground that they put in new. And it's petrified in the ground. That doesn't take a long time if it's a new fence post. It gets petrified. So that kind of destroys that. And also they thought the process of creating diamonds would be a slow, long process, but they can um, create them pretty quickly now in the right conditions. So basically we overpay for diamonds a lot. Because they can make them cheap. Well, not cheap, but they can make them pretty quickly. Population growth shows that a global flood must have occurred. Recorded? No. Heard. Why did I do that? Heard. Hold up. I'm spelling. I'm just terrible spoiler today. Yeah. Occurred. Oh. Ha. You see? This is what happens when you do things late at night or there you go. Double check. Occurred. And I hope that it also demonstrates that even when you're a native speaker, English spelling sucks. It completely sucks. Population growth shows that a global flood must have occurred. If the universe has a creator, you would expect the creator to have revealed itself. Or himself, or whatever. Now let's go back to this, the population growth. Population growth shows that a global flood must have occurred. Now if you take the birth rates, even before like technology and everything, Without a flood, there would have been so, so, so many people that, like, they, we would have already hit the um, population that we have, like, today way back before, like, Jesus' time. And people crunched the numbers. So, yeah, there, there had to have been a natural disaster of such magnitude that it wiped out so much of the population just because of population growth alone. So, and yeah, if the universe has a creator, you would expect the creator to have revealed itself or himself. Out of all the world religions, Christianity shows the most supernatural predictive power. Prophecy. So when I'm talking about supernatural predictive power, I'm talking about prophecy. Jesus predicted a time when all people would need a chip in order to buy and sell goods. 
before electricity, microchips were predicted. There is more evidence for Jesus Christ than for Julius Caesar, the Roman emperor, in case you don't know. If most of you should, I would think. Multiple hostile sources confirm the biblical account of Jesus. The, the thing is about uh, any historical facts, when people that are against the particular worldview agree that the person existed and that most of the facts, then it's a pretty good chance that, yeah, it occurred. They even confirm Jesus' brother dying for the belief that Jesus rose from the dead. So in the secular records, they confirm that James, the brother of Jesus, died, believing that his brother was God. I don't know about you, but I am not going to die for my sister if she claims that she's God. I don't know any way she could convince me. I don't know any family that would be convinced that their brother was like God, the creator. No brother willingly dies for the belief that their brother is God. No brother willingly dies for the belief that their brother is God. And there, in this case, is the E-I-R spelling. Separate texts in China confirm the supernatural events surrounding the death and resurrection of Jesus. Christianity alone has God taking responsibility for giving creation free will. If you look at all the other world religions, God created free will and also took responsibility for free will. And you can look at all the other ones, there's really no other God that claims that they took responsibility for creating free will and gave us a way to be forgiven for misusing our free will. Thank you for visiting. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Um, I don't know if any of you know this, or it's all a lot of YouTube channels, but basically the easiest way for a channel to grow and eventually become successful where they the, the creator can do it more like freely and full-time is by liking, subscribing, and commenting. Because what it does is it tells the computer that you like them, and it suggests my content to other people that are looking to learn English. Because honestly, I would have no problem making multiple videos a day or, yeah. And also, I'm always looking for um, people to do videos with. If you wanted to do a English conversation, the easiest way to get a hold of me is probably like commenting or find me on HelloTalk, Instagram, or uh, Twitter. Please free, look, excuse me. Feel free to ask any questions or suggest future topics in the comments. If you like Christian poetry, check out my other channel, Narrowgate vs. Scandalgate, on YouTube and many other streaming platforms. You can find my Christian poetry for fantasy books at Amazon.com under LGDJ. My website is otakos, otakos for otakus.com. Have an incredible day. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God.